Hello, everybody. If you're interested in scheduling a consultation with me, as of today, the 15th of July, there is presently a 15% discount open on all consultations using the discount code 15 in all uppercase letters at the link above. I feel a bit uncomfortable because I think that you're watching me and you're giving me that look as if there's something wrong with me or as if there's something about me that you don't like. So I'm going to do my best just to show you how much you can like me and to try to make it so that you're really comfortable in my presence. Because the thing that I don't really want is for you to be uncomfortable. But then I'm going to find myself in a position where, you know, ultimately I just can't keep it up for very long. So then I'm going to retreat and I'm going to go hide and go be by myself or I'll create a sequence of events that makes all of that happen anyway. Well, I suppose it's a little more intricate than that, but that's a good segue into understanding K2 in the first house and Rahu in the seventh house. Before we get into this in-depth explanation of Ketu in the first and Rahu in the seventh, it's perhaps important to understand the real function of Ketu and Rahu. Now, most people understand Ketu as being related to previous lifetimes karma and Rahu as being connected to the path to resolving that karma in this particular lifetime. But I find that that explanation doesn't really give an insight into the uh, deeper workings of what Ketu and Rahu are really all about. Ketu I like to refer to as being connected to something called the security paradigm. Uh, what is a paradigm? A paradigm is a belief or a way of looking at things. and so It's something that we construct our world around. And K2 represents that security paradigm or that security structure where we either think, if I do this, everything in my life is going to turn out okay. Or we find ourselves in a position where we know if we do something, it's not going to turn out okay. But we feel so used to doing that that we don't know of anything else to do. So we just keep doing the same thing over and over again. Interestingly enough, in the connection between K2 and previous lifetimes karma, the whatever pattern K2 represents in the horoscope is usually integrated into uh, a human being during their early childhood because we get conditioned responses from our parents or those who take care of us. And one part of our mind equates the concept of approval from our guardians as being ensuring our survival, right? And when our guardians are a little bit upset with this, uh, we tend to think that our survival is threatened. And so we tend to adopt those patterns that are gonna give us the approval and tend to steer away from those patterns that we think are going to bring disapproval into our lives. And that's how the patterns of K2 get formed. Uh, Rahu's job in the horoscope is to pull the individual out of that comfort zone, which isn't really a comfort zone at all. As a matter of fact, it's, it's confined quite often. But Rahu's job is to pull us out of that security zone that K2 creates so that we can expand, so that we can grow, so that we can deeper our understanding of, you know, of our own evolution. But then we need K2 as well to bring those experiences of Rahu back to so that we can integrate and then advance and ultimately find liberation. That's why plan, uh, K2 is considered the planet of liberation. But let's go into talking about K2 in the first and Rahu in the seventh. K2 in the first house is very self-controlled. The focus is on the self. Quite often, these people find a lot of comfort in being alone, but in their solitude, there is eventually this pull 
for something greater. Ultimately, they get lonely, right? They, their life tends to, at least from their perspective, uh, often, often on, often and often on, I should say, throughout the course of their life, their life, they feel, will work better if they're by themselves. Because relationships bring a lot of chaos and upheaval into their lives, but that's precisely what they're meant to go explore in order to understand more deeply how to, I guess the best way to describe it is to understand the totality of self and the interconnection of all things and how even though you're looking at another, the other really on a certain level is very deeply connected to self. And even though we're looking at other individuals, I'm not saying there's no other people in creation, there's only you, right? But what I am saying is we quite often play our shadow out on the other person. And K2 in the first house will quite often play out its shadow because it's being self-controlled and think that other people are watching it. Now, where you have Rahu in the horoscope, there's quite a lot of passion and even obsession upon occasion. So these people will have a lot of focus on relationships. Relationships become a big thing in their life, right? It's like they're obsessed with relationships. And even they're obsessed with, quite often, watching other people. And because they watch other people with really a lot of deep scrutiny, the mindset is, if I do that, then everybody else must be doing that as well. So that means other people are watching me. So I better be careful of the appearance that I'm putting up. And that makes it really hard for these people to function in relationships. Quite honestly put, they have a hard time relaxing or letting their hair down in relationships, right? They, um, if you understand the first and the seventh house, right? The first house is our perspective. It's the point that's on the eastern horizon at the time that we're born. The seventh house is that point that's on the western horizon at the time that we're born. Our whole life, we go from the first house to the seventh house, but we never fully reach that, that horizon. So these people become very ultimately obsessed with the horizon. I bet you with people with Ketu in the first house and Rahu in the seventh that they even have a lot of uh, paintings or pictures in terms of artwork that revolve around the horizon because that would really make a lot of sense. So their focus on this lifetime is learning how to truly relate to other people, right? And to not, uh, as much as possible, uh, to not play out their shadow on other relationships, right? Because they're playing out their shadow because they never let themselves relax into themselves within the confines of a relationship. These people also make natural performers. Uh, quite often you'll find people who are involved in the performing arts, not all the time, will have K2 in the first and Rahu in the seventh because the focus is on being in the public eye and how they are being observed or watched whilst being in the public eye. Right? So they're very good at performing for others. But if you understand, that makes it really hard to let people close to you. Taking it out of the realm of the performing arts, you know, like acting or being a musician, and taking it into the personal, it becomes a thing of going, who am I relating to? Am I relating to this person who's performing for me? Or am I relating to the true individual? So there's a lot of focus around relationships because these people are needing to get to the point where they're comfortable with their own shadow or with those parts of themselves that they don't feel so comfortable about. And so, that, so they can become more comfortable within the realms of understanding uh, their shadow or their, their dark side, so to speak. And I don't mean evil, I just mean dark as in unknown then they will, you know, quite often find themselves in relationships playing out that other side of themselves within the relationship. And so it makes it very difficult from their perspective to actually be able to relax into the relationship and have a true relationship with another individual. So again, the focus needs to be more 
on having true relationships with other people, where you're relating to the other individual for who they are, and not just as a projection of your shadow side. And there's a need with uh, Ketu in the first house, Rahu in the seventh house people, for them to learn how to be able to relax within relationships and not feel that they always have to perform or right. be concerned about how good of a job that they're doing within the realm of the relationship. If you'd like to know a little bit more about your own nodal axis, the houses that it's in, that they are in, I should say, and even the uh, signs and the nakshatras that they're in, I do have a consultation that's called the Intensive Consultation, uh, as well as any of my consultation packages. Those contain a karmic analysis, which will give you a very deep understanding of your nodal axis and what it's bringing into your life at this particular moment in time and how you can best work with that. If you're interested in scheduling one of those with me at present, again, there's a 15% discount as of today, uh, the 15th of July, and you just need to use the discount code 15 in all uppercase letters at the link that you'll find above. That's going to do it for this look at K2 in the first house and Rahu in the seventh. Until next time, with the continuance of this series, Please do take the very best care of yourself. Bye now.